Hey designers, I'm Helen Castillo and today we're doing a one day challenge. Okay. <laughs> today we'll be sewing the entirety of the Anthea dress, including a pattern manipulation for adjusting the bust panel. This medium weight linen is the perfect choice. This is a one day challenge designers. So we've got to get to mood, grab our fabrics, grab our supplies, don't forget your zipper and back to the workroom. The Anthea Milkmaid dress is patterned for a B cup, and today I'll be showing you a pattern manipulation for enhancing the bust size. First step is to cut all of your pattern pieces in fabric and lining. For my example, I decided to cut both my lining and my self fabric in the same. Our first sewing step is to take a pair of our back bodice, side back bodice, and side front bodice pieces and sew them together with half inch seam allowance. Now we've got our center back, side back, and side front pieces pinned together. We're gonna sew half an inch, half an inch as well. Repeat that for the opposite side. And at this point, you can repeat the same for the back panels of your lining. Well, once these bits are, are sewn, like we're making decent progress, you know? So now we have our center back, side back, and side front panels pin basted together for both myself and my lining sets. I'm going to join those with half inch seam allowance and then I'll press all of my seams open. For the straps of the Athena dress, you're going to take your two self cut pieces in your self fabric. Be sure that you've clipped your notches for the shoulder. You're gonna run to the iron and press in half lengthwise to align your notches here and keep the raw edges to each other. So now we've attached our center back to side back to side front pieces and taking our straps, we're going to place them with the raw edge facing toward our arm scythe. You can pin those in place. Next, we're going to join our strap to the opposite side of our arm scythe. You can place a pin or do a quarter inch basting stitch to hold in place. For a basting stitch, you wanna be sure that you have the longest stitch setting on your machine. You do not have to back tack. This is a stitch that we'll be using again when we put the ease in the shoulder cap of our sleeves. You can repeat your basting on the opposite side of your shoulder straps. So our next step is we're gonna grab our lining pieces for our side, back, and center back bodice and we're going to stitch along the front shoulder and we're gonna stitch along the back shoulder and along to center back and continue for the opposite side. Look at that. Now we're going to repeat the same sewing step to our opposite side of the bodice. So our last step before flipping our bodice to the right side is we're going to clip in the corner where we've pivoted so we can reduce that seam allowance have a nice clean corner on the right side. And here is the corner, and then I can flip it for you too. So now we'll repeat that step for the opposite side, flip to the right side and run to the ironing board. We're flying, I don't know about you, but like I'm feeling good for time. This isn't my first make it work moment, okay? All right, so now that we've pressed our edges to the right side, all of our clean seams, our center back and back neckline should meet up with our back strap nice and clean. And then from the front, we should still have our seam allowance for when we insert our bust panel. Our next step is to attach our center front panels to our side front panels just here and the same for our lining. So taking our center front panels, we're going to pin them in place so we sew right sides together of ourself and our lining. Ta-da! So now we're gonna sew half inch, half inch to join our center front panels. So now that we've inserted our center front panel into our self layer and our lining layer, we're going to lay out the entire bodice flat. And you can either put a basting stitch a quarter inch from the edge along this opening where our bust insert will go, or you can clean finish it on the serger or with a zigzag stitch. So be sure to align your seam allowances at each point 
and then run back to the machine or the serger and clean finish that edge, making sure not to cut away any of our seam allowance. Make sure to adjust your stitch length the longest on your machine, and we'll do that a quarter inch from the raw edge. So I've just pinned my sample to the form just to be sure that everything is lining up accordingly. If I wanted to make any adjustments to the straps or the armholes, I could make those fit changes, but very minorly. So this would be a good time to try the bodice on. Next, we'll be doing the bust adjustment for the panel that inserts here. Traditionally speaking with pattern manipulations that involve slashing and spreading to add fullness to an area, we would split this pattern piece and spread all of those panels to create a new pattern piece. Because this is originally drafted for a size B cup and we want to go up to a C or larger, I'm just going to add another inch of fullness. So I'm just gonna reinforce this fold line in pencil. I'm using the size six. So I'm gonna divide this 12 inches into a few sections. These are going to be my slash lines. I'm gonna put in a, hor a horizon line here. Now that we have our horizon line, to be sure that we line up each of our pattern pieces, because we're adding an extra inch, I'm gonna be sure that the distance between each of my slashed and spread panels is 5 sixteenths of an inch. So if you feel like an extra inch is too much, because it will be one extra inch on either side, you can even reduce that. You can add in just about a quarter. You can even add an extra eighth because all of this gathering is gonna allow for more fullness for a larger bust. Wow, that's just right. So we'll tape that pattern piece in place. For our last step, we're gonna take the ruler and pencil and we're gonna join all of our edges along the top and bottom of our new pattern. You can tape as much of your slashed area of your patterns as you like because we'll be cutting around the full perimeter of our new pattern. I need weights, I need weights, I need weights. Oh, your arms are hairy. That does not look like a me arm. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna clip my nachos. Pro tip, always clip a notch where you've cut your fabric on the fold. That usually indicates center front or center back of the pattern. We'll be doing a buttonhole that's going to be smack dab in the middle of one square inch on either side of our center front fold line. You can mark that in with chalk or a pin, and then we'll run to the machine and put in a buttonhole. So we've attached our buttonhole foot. I've placed a small button just for spacing. I'm gonna place my fabric underneath the foot where I've made my mark, if it wants to allow me to do that. Oh, this is so nerve wracking, because what if I do it wrong, like that's a wrap. I'm gonna drop my footy there. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna select our buttonhole. One buttonhole down. Drum roll. Let's hope it's in the middle. Oh, it is. Yeah, sometimes you just have to throw your balls to the wind, right? <laughs> All right. Now that we have both of our buttonholes in place, we're going to use a pro tip for opening the buttonhole. We're gonna place a pin through either side of our buttonhole and using our seam ripper, we're gonna slash that buttonhole open. What the pin does is it stops the seam ripper from continuing in to cut your garment. And there you have it. The next step is we're gonna create our casing along the top edge of our bust panel. We're gonna fold wrong sides together. We can align our notch at the bottom edge of this piece. And pin along the perimeter. We don't wanna pin along that clean edge of the fold over of the top of the fabric. So now we're gonna put a running stitch along this bottom raw edge of our bust panel. You can press along the top edge as well if you'd like because this is going to become our clean finished neckline. And then we're going to do a regular stitch 
to create the casing one inch from that top edge. For your drawstring, you can cut one inch by the full width of your fabric. I'm going to run to my machine, turn this right sides together. Here's an idea or a pro tip if you will, is you could zigzag stitch the raw edge together and then we'll take the loop turner and flip this to the right side. So now that we've got our drawstring sewn right sides together, I'm gonna fold the length in half and I'm gonna clip. It's too long to put through the loop turner and turn it once and since I need it coming from two sides of my bust panel, now I've got two drawstrings. This part I am not narrating because it's probably not gonna work. Just FYI. Um, it's already stuck, all right. Ugh, Kyle, do we have to film this part? Now that we've turned our drawstring right side out, I've just clipped the raw edge there. I'm gonna just do a little knot. Try to keep the raw cut edge in my knot. And there you have it. And we'll repeat that for the drawstring that will go on the opposite side. Now that we've made our drawstrings, we're going to open up the top of either side of this bust panel so that we can funnel through our draw cord on either side of the bodice. So I'm just removing my stitching above my casing stitching and I'll repeat that for the opposite side. And last but not least, we're going to insert our drawstring into either of our buttonholes. I'm gonna tie these two in just a little bow for now so they don't get pulled through. <laughs> I'm gonna place one end through my buttonhole here, but with the assistance of my loop turner, Next, we'll run to the machine. We'll tack these straps in place, and then we've got a place in our gathering running stitch along the bottom edge of our bus panel. Oh, you're dead. It's like, let's go. Eh, every second counts. Now we're going to place a running stitch between both notches at the bottom of this bus panel. I'm gonna start an eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm not going to do a back tack. While holding my bobbin thread, I'm just going to begin gathering the bottom edge of my bust panel. You'll continue that for the full length between notches to give yourself the gathers at the bottom of this pattern piece. So now that our drawstring is in place, we've gathered the bottom edge of this bust panel. We're going to flip this so that our bust panel and our bodice are right sides facing. And we're going to align our center front notch, which I just lost, which is right there. We'll align so that notch to this notch. We'll put a pin in place. We're also going to match up the notch that's at the side of this bust panel with the sides of this bust panel opening. And that's where our gathers come into place so that we can ease this section in between those three points. Now that we have our gathered section matching up our notches pinned in place, we can turn up to match the top edge of our bust panel to the top edge of the bodice pin that in place as well. And when you go to the machine, you're gonna have to be sure to pivot a bit because we've got this rounded section. Don't be tempted to sew in a straight line because you may not sew the correct seam allowance for both pieces. So when you are sewing through gathers, you wanna be sure that they're evenly distributed, but also they're not folding over on top of each other. 
And also in this curved area, I'm gonna be sure that I use um, any type of tool. You can use a seam ripper or a small pair of scissors to help kind of guide and pivot the fabric. Be sure to maintain that your seam allowance is consistent. And it just helps with, you know, we're going through three layers of fabric, actually four right now. So it's a lot of seam allowances to control. So as you're approaching the finish of this seam, make sure that your stitching doesn't overlap this clean edge of your strap because this is going to be almost like this miter or corner that's gonna be exposed from the right side. And put a few back tacks in there. We'll clip this and reveal from the right side. So you'll have strap, your casing for your gathers here, and you'll see what we had just sewn lines up nice and clean there. So pretty. Our next step is going to be to insert our sleeves. Since you have two layers here as we fold it over the shoulder straps, you can put in a basting stitch, which would just be the longest length on your machine just to keep those two layers in place. And then we're gonna prep the sleeve by gathering in between notches on the sleeve cap, and then we'll attach it into either armhole. Taking our sleeves, we're gonna have them right sides facing up and just double check that you have your two back notches. One notch always represents the front of the garment, two notches represents the back, and then we need our shoulder notch in place as well. We're gonna run to the machine and change our stitch length setting to the longest stitch length. We're gonna put two rows of running stitches in between our back and front notches, and we're gonna repeat that for our opposite sleeve. And we're going to start about an eighth of an inch from the cut edge of our sleeve cap. I'm gonna do one row. I'm gonna pivot when I get to my back notches and come back around. So by having two rows of your gathering stitch, in case one of them snaps, you'll always have the second as a backup. So now that we've put our two rows of running stitches into the cap of our sleeve between front and back notches, we're going to pull our two bobbin threads and begin gathering our sleeve cap. So now that we've started to gather the ease in the cap, we're going to bring our inseams right sides together and we're gonna close that up with a half inch seam allowance. Repeat this step for your other sleeve. For the inseam of the sleeve, we're going to close that with half inch seam allowance and then repeat for the opposite sleeve. Both of our sleeve caps have our basting stitch and have been gathered in place. We've closed up the inseam, and the inseam is important because we're gonna use this seam as if it's a notch to indicate aligning with the side seam of the bodice. Make sure to double check that your front of sleeve notch is pointing toward the front of the bodice. That would be your one notch, and then you are good to go. So we'll align our side seam of bodice with inseam of sleeve. You also have a shoulder seam, which is at the top. There's our nachi poo. So we're gonna bring our armhole with the right sides facing, align our shoulder notch to the shoulder notch of our sleeve. Pin those in place. And that will help us with how we distribute the ease in the cap. So if you need to add any more gather, to the cap to fit in between your shoulder notch and your top of bodice. You can just hold on to those bobbin threads that we placed in with our basting stitch and gather that up to create the same length of both pieces. Now that we've pin basted both of our sleeves into our armholes, we're gonna run to the machine. So half inch seam allowance. Make sure that you're keeping your gathers evenly distributed as you're attaching them and keep those notches aligned. So now we've got our sleeve attached to our armhole here. You have the option of attaching like a double face bias ribbon to clean finish that edge, or you could zigzag or serge. Then we would turn our shoulder strap to the right side, and there are the gathers of your puff sleeve sleeve cap. We'll repeat this for the opposite sleeve, and then we will put the elastic in the casing along the hem of both sleeves. 
So before we turn down our edge to create the casing for the hem of the sleeve, I'm gonna clean finish this edge with a zigzag stitch. And I'll repeat this for the opposite sleeve. So cute, it's so cute. Now that we've clean finished both of our sleeve hems, I'm gonna run to the iron, turn up half inch, leave a bit of an opening to create a casing and then funnel through my elastic. So we've turned up the hem of both of our sleeves, pin that in place, we'll run to the machine, do a top stitch and leave an opening as our elastic casing. So now that we've created the casing for both of our sleeve hems, we've left an opening so we can funnel through our elastic. We're gonna attach that to a safety pin and then we're gonna funnel this through either of our sleeve hems. So we find our opening here and we're gonna pass that through. Make sure that your opposite end is pinned somewhere in place so that the elastic doesn't get pulled all the way through your sleeve hem. So now that we have both of our cut ends of the elastic, we can pin those together and run to the sewing machine. And if there is too much, let's make the adjustment for that. And we'll just ease the rest of it evenly distributed along the hem of the sleeve. And this is a good time to consider trying your sleeve on to be sure that the elastic's not too tight or too loose. And that's what our finished product will look like. Now that we have funneled our elastic through the hem casing, we're just gonna do a tack. I'm gonna repeat this for the other sleeve and then we will close up our sleeve casing. So now we've finished the bodice. We've got our drawstring here across the top clean finished edge of our bust panel. We've got our princess seams in place. Our sleeves have been set into the armholes and we've created that elastic casing in the hems. We're gonna jump into the skirt now and we can throw in the zipper after we've attached that. Moving on to the skirt, we'll start with the center front panel and our two side fronts. You'll notice that the curve of the waist turns upward towards the side seams. You're also gonna have double notches that are gonna be at your side seams to indicate that those are going towards the back of the garment. So we're gonna flip these pieces right sides together. We're gonna pin along our side front seam. Right side spacing from top to bottom. You can match up your notches as well. And then we will sew with half inch seam allowance. But there you have it. So now we've pinned our center front to our two side front panels. We're gonna sew those up with half inch seam allowance. And the only difference for the back is that our center back has a split down the center where our zipper will be attached. That's all. Now we're gonna press those open. All right, so we're gonna place our front right side spacing. We'll align our side seams on either side. And then we will pin from top of waist to bottom of hem on either side, half an inch, and then press those open. So now that we've assembled all of our panels of our skirt, we're going to take our bodice with the right side spacing. We're gonna align our center front notch. So pro tip, anytime you cut a panel or pattern piece that's on the fold of center front or center back, it's good to place a notch in your fabric. Usually that is not a notch that's available on the pattern, but it helps to keep everything aligned from center front and center back. See, now this is the part that's gonna bug me because this seam doesn't line up to the seam of the skirt, does it? <laughs> now that we've pinned our bodice to skirt, matching up each of our seam lines, center front included, we're gonna run to the machine and we're gonna close that up with half inch. I just wanna check how this looks first before I take this away. That's fine, that's not as fine. People just don't need to look as close. Eh, eh, eh. Okay, so now we're gonna insert our invisible zipper. I just went to the iron and I pressed my teeth open a bit so that they're kind of exposing. Um, you can very vaguely see that there's kind of like a dashed line in here, 
depending on how thick of the fabric that you are sewing an invisible zipper into, you may even want to step a little bit away back from here. But essentially you want to choose a zipper not based on the color of the tape, but based on the color of the pull that matches your fabric because that should be the only part that's exposed on this type of zipper. So now we're going to take our zipper, we're going to place right side to right side, and I'm going to fold back the top end here, and I have half inch seam allowance, so just be conscientious of that distance from where you're sewing. So now we're going to run to the machine, attach our zipper, and repeat this step for the other side. So now that I've attached one side of my invisible zipper tape, I've closed my zipper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a notch on my unsewn side so that I know where to align it at the waist seam of my dress. So now that our invisible zipper is set into place, we were sure to keep the alignment of our waist seam. We sewed all the way to the top. Optional, you can attach a hook and eye to the inside of the top end of your zipper. You can trim away this excess of the tape as well. Clean finish that center back seam allowance. And then we have to close up the remainder of our center back before we jump into hemming our Athena dress. Now I'll pin my hem edges together of my center back because we're going to close the remainder of our center back seam below our zipper. It's best practice to pin flat. So with our zipper foot still attached, we're gonna continue our center back seam from where we ended with our zipper so that we can continue and go straight down to the hem. Pro tip, this is a hack for a baby hem. We're gonna start by doing a Basting stitch, so the longest stitch length on your machine. I'm gonna do a quarter inch hem allowance, and we're just gonna run this the full length of our skirt. Come on, this, I'm right at the very end too. Come on, come on, come on, just give me a few, give me a few. So now we have our running stitch, also known as a basting stitch, a quarter inch from our raw edge of our hem. We're gonna run to the ironing board and we're gonna turn that up. Then we'll come back to the machine and we will do our faux baby hem top stitch. So I've pressed up my hem using my basting stitch as my guide, giving a nice clean edge to the right side of the fabric. I'm gonna run my hem through the machine one more time, close to the edge, using a regular stitch length. I think I'm pooped, guys. All right, I am not trimming up the rest of the It is done. Challenge complete. Well, my Anthea dress is done. And congratulations, Helen. You've completed our one day challenge. This mystery box contains the items for your next sewing project. Best of luck, you'll need it. Oh my, thank you for joining us today for the Anthea Dress One Day Challenge. Be sure to download your free sewing pattern from the Mood Society blog and get started today. If there are any patterns that you would like for us to tackle next, be sure to let us know in the comment section below. Like and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest sewing tutorials only from moodfabrics.com.